overexposure to, to phosphine gas can happen pretty easily. I have uh, experienced this, unfortunately, but um, high humidity application using pellets and tablets where we have quick breakdown, um, we have you know maybe unknown levels or the way we're doing the application, um, and it feels like if you've ever, I'm sure most of you have been here have been sick at one point or another and had the flu, the chills. You lay in bed and you think, oh, you know, I'm just, I, I can't move, I feel terrible. Well, that's very similar to what um, phosphine poisoning can feel like. So for a fluoride gas, is a, a little bit different. Um, you are going to have that lethargic feeling, though, um, respiratory irritations, um, you know, central nervous system issues, depression. Um, but I'll, I'll read through all these. But one thing that the cylinderized gases have that aluminum phosphide won't have or magnesium phosphide is that the, the pressure issues with the liquid. So it's rapidly changing from a liquid to a gas, which, which it has a big temperature draw, an energy change there. So that can cause your, your skin burn. So the personal exposure levels um, on, on phosphine is um, we have a TWA, which is a time-weighted average over an eight-hour OSHA workday, is 0.3 ppm. Anything above the 0.3 ppm um, requires you to wear respiratory protection. So what's appropriate? Between 0.3 and 15 ppm, chin-style canister masks with um, phosphine-rated canisters attached to them. So a lot goes into fit testing. I'm not, I'm not going to go there, but making sure the gas mask is tight and you're using um, not out-of-date equipment. Um, so anything up, that's good up to 15 ppm and in emergency situations up to 1,000. I have a chart here, I know it's difficult to read, but basically that, that the phosphine canister has a charcoal filter in it. So eventually that charcoal filter, like if you held a sponge under running water, is gonna fill up and then it's gonna stop blocking the, the phosphine gas from coming in. So you, this, this is regularly, uh, readily available through Dragger. If you have questions on if you're using phosphine canisters, how long before I need to change that out? And it all depends on how much phosphine you're, you're being exposed to. If levels are above 15 ppm or you don't know what they are, then you, should, you must wear a self-contained breathing apparatus. You can't rely on your nose to pick up phosphine, although we all know it smells. It has an odor to it, but that's because a lot of the, the solid formulations definitely have an ammonia to them in a chemical reaction, and that you'll pick that up. The low levels of phosphine, pure phosphine, like in the vapor phos system, is very difficult to detect, and your nose gets very desensitized to it quickly. So you can be in quite elevated levels and, and not be aware of it. So um, the threshold limit value is a little bit different. There's no TWA for sulfuryl fluoride. It is a threshold limit value of okay. 1 ppm for clearing structures and for personal exposure. 